Dakar, the capital of Senegal, on the northwest coast of Africa. A marketplace of history, once known as the Paris of West Africa, Dakar may one day be remembered for his place in the struggle for South Africa. On this day, Dakar is awaiting the arrival of black and white South Africans. They're not sure what South Africa would be like if it's governed by the ANC. I mean, this is why they've come to talk. They've come to try and find out what it's all about. And in that sense, if they are convinced, or let me put it this way, if the ANC can convince them that there's a future beyond apartheid for them in an ANC South Africa, they will not be afraid of it. Certainly not. Among them are academics and clergy, professionals and politicians, an intellectual cross-section of Afrikanerdom that has no first-hand knowledge of the ANC or its leaders. It's despite this government profile of the ANC that the Afrikaner delegation headed for Dakar. They arrived in the belief that without the ANC, there can be no end to South Africa's racial strife. But landing near midnight, these travelers didn't know what to expect, what they'd see or hear. They couldn't have expected Tabo and Becky's first words. My name is Tabo Mbeke. I'm an Afrikaner. <laughs> Known to each other only by reputation, as bitter adversaries, these South Africans could for the first time at least introduce themselves. We have come here not because we agree on everything. Our past histories have trapped us into misunderstandings and conflict. But we have come here, in a sense, <clears throat> to escape the worst of that history and to build on what is good in it. I'm a young Afrikaner. I'm proud to be a young Afrikaner. I'm a postgraduate student at Stellenbosch Engineering. People like my father, people like my, uh, my grandfather. My grandfather is actually a policeman, <laughs> um, a very senior policeman. He was a general. Uh, have definite problems with talking, discussing South African realities with communists and radicals and whatever. And you see, this is the problem with Afrikaners and with, with, with young white people. You have to make a choice between what you know and the security you have and the appreciation you have within your own community. And you have to make a choice uh, that's, that would imply a choice of conscience. The questions that demanded almost all our attention was how can we ensure a new South Africa free from apartheid but one which is free from being torn apart by polarizing forces? I think more myths and misunderstandings had been exploded in the last four days and probably the last three decades in South Africa. In South Africa, most Afrikaners see no future in one of their own. Bayers Nordia, who might have stood as Prime Minister in Pretoria, standing instead with Thabo Mbeki in Ouagadougou, laying the cornerstone of a monument against apartheid. we've all presented this is the Africana ANC summit I'm not sure if that's true it makes nice copy though. but but what is important is that the, the kids in the townships also saw it like that they have this very very dark future now we've seen all over the world what people do who are desperate who have no future and this is what we've been seeing in South Africa senseless violence I mean what kind of person would necklace, would, would put a tie around someone and burn him to death and laugh. And, and I mean, this is, this is not trying to excuse the necklace. I mean, that's horrible. And then, but I asked myself the question, how can nice people, ordinary kids, what, what drove them, what drives them to do that kind of thing? It's hopelessness. It's, it's, it's just seeing no hope in the future. Uh, maybe we helped a little bit to give them a little bit of hope because they saw this is an Afrikaner ANC summit. 
Awaiting the delegates in South Africa was a charge of treason, a clear sign that negotiations with Afrikaners in Pretoria aren't the same as talks with dissident Afrikaners in Dakar. One of the phrases that I read in the slave quarters was a prayer. It said, God, let my people who have suffered much be great. We have experienced some of the greatness of the people of Senegal who have transcended that past. I think the prayer of Gore should become the prayer also of South Africa. Dr. Van Sel Slabbert het vier graden bij de Universiteit van Stellenbosch verwerf en in 1967 is hij doktorsgraad in filosofie aan hem toegekend. Hij heeft een grote rol gespeeld in de reling van die eerste samensprekings tussen die ANC en die destijdse Zuid-Afrikaanse regering in Dakar in 1987. Dr. Van Sel Slabbert zei die universiteit zal socio-economische problemen met alle dringendheid aanpakken. Die universiteit sê, hy geniet Dr. Van Seil Slabbert sy steun vir die richting waarin hy nou beweeg. Dr. Slabbert is nou ingeldig hier by ons universiteit en dit is baie belangrijk dat ons allemaal verstaan dat dit is deel van die vernieuwing van die universiteit.